Hello children, I hope you have gone through the previous videos and you have started learning the terminologies related to lenses. I hope that you have learned the convex lens and the ray diagrams associated with it. So let's learn something new about the second lens that is concave lens. So in this video we will be talking about ray diagrams of concave lens lens formula and power of lens. To begin with, I am sharing a video that will be teaching you about concave lens and the ray diagrams associated with it. So let's begin with. Hi, in this video, I'll explain about the ray diagrams for a concave lens. I'll use uh, several object positions to make it easy to understand. We can see in this image a concave lens with the material thinning out at the center. If we were to chop that concave lens about its vertical axis, you will see a textbook representation. So the circumference is represented by the broad uh, area at the top and the center is shown as a thinned out area. If you draw a vertical line to the center of the lens, as well as a horizontal line through that center. The intersection is marked with an orange plus and is called O as the center of the lens. Now the principal axis is very important. On that horizontal white line we draw out F1 and 2F1. F1 is a focal point is at the focal length from O. Similarly on the right hand side we mark out F2 and 2F2. Now let's look at an animation. So I'm rotating the concave lens and you can see the shape of that and uh, it's a round in shape and the material is thinned out at the center. That's why when you cut it uh, on its vertical axis you see the shape that you see in the uh, textbooks. So now we do the same thing. Um, we draw the principal axis, uh, mark out F1 to F1 on the left hand side F2 to F2 on the right hand side. We plug in a light source and uh, so that the light rays will always travel from left towards the right. So the object is at infinity now. The green rays are coming in parallel to the principal axis and they will diverge because the concave lens is also known as a diverging lens. You can see how they diverge after coming out from the lens, after the refraction. These rays will never meet on the right hand side. So they have to be projected backwards and you can see the dotted lines all converging at F1. Therefore, F1 is the focal point for a concave lens. Next, we will take up some object positions and we'll plug in an object uh, in the shape of an arrow. The bottom of the arrow does not need a ray diagram because the ray of light is passing through that bottom in fact, that's the principal axis. So the bottom of the image also will fall on the principal axis. Now from the top of that arrow, we surely need a ray diagram. So let's first take that green ray, which is parallel to the principal axis, exactly as we did for the infinity position. So that green ray is going to diverge and get projected backwards towards F1. The orange ray is new here. It's aimed towards the F2 on the right hand side. So it behaves opposite to the green ray. So because it's aimed at the focal uh, distance F2, it emerges after refraction to be a ray which is parallel to the principal axis, as you can see the orange ray traveling. The blue ray passes through O without refraction. So when we project these rays backwards, they all intersect at a point which is the top point of the arrow the bottom point I already covered. So we get an image that's virtual, erect and diminished and the position of the image is between O and F1. Now let's move the object closer to the lens and uh, we put it at 2F1. When we place it at 2F1 we will do the same thing and draw the three rays that we drew before and all the three rays will behave exactly as they did before. So the green ray will be parallel to the principal axis. It will refract and diverge and bend upwards and its projection will pass through F1 
the orange ray is aimed at F2. It will travel parallel to the principal axis, so we project it back with a dotted line. The blue ray goes through O without any change. Our question is, why don't we draw a ray through F1? That's possible, and the ray through F1 will hit the lens, diverge downwards, and if we project it back, it will all meet at that arrow that we have drawn as the image. The image here is again virtual, erect, diminished, and its position is between O and F1. The position of that image and the size seems to be consistent for different positions of the object. Next, we should uh, move the object closer to the lens and uh, put it somewhere between 2F1 and F1. Let's do that. Mm, it's almost uh, the right point. So we stop it here and we start the ray diagram. We can start it anywhere actually between 2F1 and F1. So we have the three rays um, and here again we could draw a ray through F1 which would be very sloping uh, uh, and it will go down and probably hit the base of the lens. We don't want that hence I haven't taken a ray through F1. But the three rays work well, the green ray, the orange ray and the blue ray as before and if we project those dotted lines they all meet in a very consistent manner and they form a very similar image which is um, virtual, erect and it is diminished in size and its position is also between O and F1 as before. There seems to be not much of a change in the uh, formation of the image. Now we uh, move the object closer to the lens and we place it exactly on the focal point F1. So it's sliding forward and here it is, it's come to F1. We draw the same three rays as we did before and uh, I will just repeat it. So the green ray um, which will hit the lens uh, diverge upwards, projected back towards F1, the orange ray aimed at F2, it travels parallel to the principal axis, we project that also backwards and we draw the blue ray through point O. Just a point of clarification, all these colors are just to make the image easier and we can use white light and get the same result. We are not using different wavelengths of light in this uh, animation. So you can see the image which is virtual, erect and diminished and the fourth thing is this position is also between O and F1 which is very consistent. We have covered uh, a lot of uh, positions of the object and the last position of the object can only be between F1 and O. So the object is being slided very close to the lens. It's almost uh, touching the lens now. We can't uh, move it uh, very close. So uh, we'll stop it uh, somewhere here and uh, draw our favorite uh, three rays, the green ray, the orange ray, and the blue ray. The green ray will diverge uh, upwards at the same angle because the ray is parallel to the principal axis. The orange ray aimed at F2 will travel parallel to the principal axis and the blue ray goes through O without any refraction. And when we do the dotted lines and the intersection, we get uh, an image which is virtual, erect, diminished uh, and position is between uh, the O and the object. I hope this was uh, useful to you. Thanks and have a great day. Now, since we have gone through the two types of lens and the ray diagrams associated with it, I think we are in a position to discuss the difference between the two based on image formed by the two lenses. So let's discuss. The very first point about convex lens, the image can be real as well as virtual. It is real if the object lies beyond the focus, while it is virtual if the object lies before the focus. But in case of concave lens, the image is always virtual for all positions of the object, as you have seen in the previous video. The second point. The image can be magnified of same size as well as diminished. It is magnified if the object lies before 2F. 
of the same size if the object is at 2f and diminished if the object is beyond 2f. Whereas, in case of concave lens, the image is always diminished. Let's see the last point. The image can be inverted as well as erect. The image is inverted if the image is at a distance beyond focus and erect if the object is within focal distance. Whereas, the image in case of concave lens is always erect. Now let's talk about the sign convention for lens. So we follow the Cartesian sign convention to measure the distances in a lens according to which the optical center of the lens is chosen as the origin of the coordinate system. The object is considered to be placed on the principal axis to the left of the lens. All the distances are measured along the principal axis from the optical center of the lens. The distance of an object from the lens is denoted by u, the distance of the image by v and the distance of second focus by f. The distances measured in the direction of incident ray are taken to be positive while the distances opposite to the direction of the incident ray are taken negative. The length above the principal axis is taken positive while the length below the principal axis is taken negative. The figure shows the distance for the concave and convex lens according to the sign convention. By sign convention, the focal length of the convex lens is positive and that of concave lens is negative. The distance of object in front of lens is always negative. The distance of image is positive if it is real and formed behind the lens while it is negative if the image is virtual and formed in front of the lens. In this slide, we are going to learn lens formula and magnification, also known as linear magnification. According to lens formula, 1 upon V minus 1 upon U is equal to 1 upon F, where V stands for distance between image and the optical center, U stands for distance between the object and the optical center, and F stands for focal length that is the distance between optical center and focus. In numericals the known values are substituted with their proper sign and then the unknown quantity is obtained with its proper sign. According to sign convention for a convex lens u is always negative, f is always positive V is positive for the real image and V is negative for the virtual image. But for a concave lens, U, V and F all are negative and our numerical value of U is always greater than V. Now let's talk about linear magnification. The ratio of length of image that is I perpendicular to the principal axis to the length of object O is called the linear magnification. So in the formula you can see M is equal to height of image to height of object which is also equal to ratio of distance of image from the optical center to distance of object from the optical center. This is known as linear magnification. For the real image which is inverted, the magnification m is negative while for the virtual image which is erect, the magnification m is positive. Thus, a convex lens can have the value of m positive 
as well as negative but a concave lens always has the value of m positive the numerical value of m is greater than 1 if the image is magnified and is 1 for image of same size as that of the object and is less than 1 for the diminished image thus the numerical value of m is always less than 1 for a concave lens while it can be greater than equal to or less than 1 for a convex lens depending upon the position of the object by a convex lens real image is formed behind the lens so u and v are with opposite signs but by the convex as well as the concave lens the virtual image is on the side of the object so u and v are with the same signs now let's learn power of a lens the deviation of the incident light rays produced by a lens on refraction through it is a measure of its power a thick lens that is a lens of short focal length and it deviates the rays more while a thin lens that is of large focal length and it deviates the rays less hence power of a lens is expressed in terms of reciprocal of its focal length its si unit is diopter so the power of lens is inversely proportional to focal length that is measured in meter depending upon the direction in which a lens deviates the light rays its power is either positive or negative if a lens deviates a ray towards its center the power is positive and if it deviates the ray away from its center the power is negative therefore the power of a convex lens is positive and that of concave lens is negative now based on the concepts that we have learned we are going to apply in the form of numericals so few numericals based on lens formula the first numerical the question is given here and according to this question the focal length of convex lens is 25 cm and as we know the focal length for convex lens is positive the image is virtual and magnified that's why m is plus 2 now we know magnification m is given by ratio of v by u so on substituting the value we get v is, is twice of u also the lens formula is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 upon f if we substitute the values with sign conventions we get 1 upon 2 u minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon 25 and if we rearrange the terms we get u equal to minus 12.5 cm now let's see a numerical that is related to the other lens that is concave lens a concave lens is given with a focal length of 30 cm and they are asking you to find out the position and magnification of image for an object which is placed at a distance of 30 cm and they are also inquiring whether the image is real or virtual so let's first of all write down whatever is given u is given to be minus 30 cm why minus sign because the object is on the left hand side of the lens focal length of concave lens is negative that's why it is minus 30 cm now if we substitute in the lens formula we'll be getting with sign conventions and if we find out for v we'll be getting answer v is equal to minus 15 cm now if we know uh, the relation between u and v in terms of m that is m is equal to v by u and if we substitute we'll be getting it comes out to be 0.5 which is less than 1 right hence on the ba- on the basis of the calculations that has been done and the information that we received 
we get image is virtual since v is negative and erect as m is m is positive right so with this we finishes uh, with a sample question of um, numericals based on lens formula with this we finish with the chapter refraction of light through lens i hope you have learned a lot regarding the two lens and you are going to apply the concepts that you have learned in your daily life i hope that you are going to work on the numericals so as to clear your concepts that you have learned about the sign conventions and lens formula thank you all of you goodbye and take care